With our first Grand Prix event of 2019 in the books, the bar has already been set high. I'm Kristen Cubbage, and welcome to Fight For It Now, where we keep you up to date on the happenings within Fight For It and Company. Tonight, we'll be taking a look back at Fight For It 5 and a look forward with a glimpse into Fight For It 6. Fight For It 5 saw the kickboxing portion of our card start off with a bang. The first fight featured Cliff Gunderson against Anthony Yotis. Gunderson controlled the action through the first two rounds and then ended the fight in epic fashion late in the third round with the devastating KO kick to the head. He'll need every bit of that momentum as he steps up to take on Jordan Fox at Fight for at 6. Fox has proven himself to be a real talent, coming into this matchup with an undefeated record of 3-0 in 2018 at Fight For It. Next, Aaron Davis took on the very game Brittany Starrett in our only female kickboxing fight of the night. It was a competitive bout that went the distance, and ultimately the judges favored Davis as the winner. Aaron's next opponent is Fight For It 3 victor Leilani the Tsunami Hodkins. We'll see how Davis' skills match up against the more experienced Hodkins at Fight Fort 6. In our kickboxing main event, heavyweight Roland Mizell, with a record of 2-1, defeated Jesse Reina in the third round by referee stoppage. As exciting as that was, the real fireworks started to fly backstage as Mizell called out Dejan Robertson, Jeter, the one man to beat him for a rematch. These two faced off at Fight for at 3 with Jeter edging out a split decision victory. There's one person I want to call out, Deshaun Robinson. Uh -oh. What's up, buddy? You got the split decision? I'm going to call it luck, I'm going to call it BS, whatever. Fight for it, even better. Let's put a title on the line. Let's make it five rounds. Okay. Let's do it, let's do it. Roly Poly's challenge was accepted, and the pair will run it back in what will be our most anticipated kickboxing match to date for the Fight For It Super Heavyweight title at Fight For It 6. Of the six kickboxing matches, two of them went to decision while the other four ended by referee stoppage. With each fight representing a different weight class, the six winners stand alone at the top of their divisions in the 2019 Grand Prix scoring. Requests from fighters are coming in daily to be part of Fight For It 6, so we expect those rankings to change quite a bit on May 4th. Moving on to the MMA portion of our card, we saw no signs of slowing down. Up first was Micah Harnden versus Zane Starrett. Starrett had three fights under his belt, but this was his first under the Fight For It banner. He is also husband to the aforementioned Brittany Starrett. This was surely a unique evening for the couple. As for Harnden, he participated in Fight For It 2 and came away with the first round submission victory. Could he do it again? The answer to that turned out to be an identical yes. Harnden won via submission with another rear naked choke right at the first round horn, earning him six points in this year's Grand Prix. Wow. Nice, Micah now on nice. the back here. Uh oh. He's got his hooks. Zane's trying to in. scramble, but he, he demands control in. without the He's hooks. He's got two hooks. Oh no. Oh. Oh, that that's looks in there. In. That that's looks deep. in. That's very deep. Can he finish he's it? He's not completely flat. He's not that's flat. the only hope he's got. Oh, that's it. He's flat. That's he's it. flat now. He's, it's, it's, it's probably it's over. over. Oh, but he's not it's quite under the chin. He's on the, he's on the jawline, it looks like. Oh, now he's under. It's, it's over. It. That's it. That was it. First round Beautiful. finished by Beautiful. Michael Harden. Beautiful. Beautiful. Also in the bantamweight class, Shamik Harvey went up against Aaron Teague for another fight that ended in the first round. With 30 seconds remaining, Harvey was able to move into mount and rain down punches until referee Wayne Spinola jumped in to stop the fight, earning Harvey six points towards the Grand Prix. He is on him like a Tasmanian devil, man. Yes. I mean, he's, yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement with the corner of wow. high sign in the Oh, Miami. wow, look at that. Bouncing his Strikes. head off the camera. That's, it. Oh, that, that's that it. That should be it. Wayne Spinola should stop this. That's it. Look that's that. it. Wow, First beautiful, round beautiful. finish for Shamik. Beautiful Shamik finish. Harvey representing Hyastan MMA. The bantamweight division is shaping up to be one of the most exciting weight classes to watch this season. Another competitive weight class looks to be the heavyweights with Cameron Ray earning six points, Chad Yard earning five, and Dalton Taylor earning three. 
Backstage, I had the chance to catch up with Dalton Taylor after his win, and he has an inspiring motivation that keeps him going. And how do you think your training prepared you for this win? Honestly, I have been on a nonstop fight camp since last year, August. Um, my wife passed away, and uh, oh, um, she passed away on April 27th, and um, I was in a really dark spot, and uh, I told her, I promised her I was going to get her this UFC belt. And uh, I got back in shape, got back in the gym in August, and I've been on a, a tear since then. And uh, from 330 pounds, and I'm at 255, I'm just getting started. Closing the night out, we featured our first two title fights, starting with Ferdinand Gok facing Ahmed Kamis for the Fight for It featherweight belt. Amateur title fights are allowed five rounds as opposed to the standard three. However, Gok didn't need all five, finishing the fight at just over two minutes into the fourth round by referee stoppage due to strikes. More body this shots. is starting to become a bully beatdown. More, more strikes. Prince Ahmed is enduring a lot of punishment right now. Oh, that was solid. These are big shots. Oh, man. Wayne Spinola taking a close look at this. He's just covering up. That's man, it. That's it. Gokay in the fourth becomes the 145 pound fight for it champion. Title fights earn Grand Prix points as well, and Gok currently shares the featherweight lead with Levi Whitlow at three points each. But look for Kamis to be back in action and aiming to redeem himself with the win at Fight for at Six against the previously mentioned Micah Harnden. Our main event of the evening saw Truck and Carson take on Alex Spalloni for the welterweight title. This one ended quickly as Carson saw the opportunity to jump into the guillotine choke at just over a minute into the first round. Right in with that big two. Poloni has a really good left hand as well. I've seen him use it. I've seen him put people down. Ooh, going for a lead hook from Poloni. Good sprawl. Ooh, going that's the under the neck. Here. That's under the neck, but he's sprawling instead. There it is. I was waiting for it. Ooh, he's got a really, Double really tight arm guillotine. in guillotine here. Oh, he's tapping, he's, he's tapping, tapping, he's tapping. Oh. That's it. First round submission by Truckin' Carlson. Amazing W. The Butterscotch Bandit hits a flying guillotine. Truckin' earned six points with this win, but shouldn't get too comfortable with that belt as Joel Faglier may have his eye on it as well. Carson and Faglier are tied at six points each in the welterweight division. Of the 40 fighters who participated in Fight 4 at 5, they represented 25 different gyms. Even though there is no Grand Prix gym champion, it's still fun to have a little friendly rivalry between them. Jim O had the best showing, earning nine points from two wins and no losses. Highest in MMA, Core Fitness, and Atlantic MMA all had nice showings as well. Here you can see how the scores and wins break down by Jim. And finally, as if you didn't have enough reasons to be excited for Fight Four at Six, we have one more for you. The main event for the evening will feature two red hot prospects making their professional debut. Dominic Brewer brings an amateur record of 5-1 and one and will be facing against Dalton Atha, who brings an amateur record of 4-1 and one into the cage. Only one of these fighters will start their professional career with a win. You'll want to be in attendance to witness Dominique and Dalton from the start. What are your thoughts on Fight 4 at 5? Who are you looking forward to seeing at Fight 4 at 6? Feel free to tell us about it in the comments. We look forward to seeing you on Cinco de Mayo weekend, May 4th at Fight Fort 6 in Hickory, North Carolina, where the action will continue and there is sure to be a shakeup in the Grand Prix standings. Until then, may the 4th be with you.